Amelia Dickinson. My sister's gay, I'm straight, and honestly, she'd make a far better parent than I would. We argue all, all the time how she practically raised me growing up, and I've done all right. I go to private boarding school. I've been offered to go to China to represent the state of New Hampshire's adolescents. But at the same time, when I look back on it, while I may be a lot more naive, not as grown up as my sister, I have more rights than her. She has to fight for things she wants. She has someone who loves her so much, but they can't really show it. And I think about it when I'm her age, right? I can go to Las Vegas and get married in one night, and then like Britney Spears, get divorced the next day. How is that fair? She has to fight for her love. And I'm sure that everybody in New Hampshire who has a civil union wants to show it too. It's not just to show that you're married, but it's the things that you get with marriage. It's a way for everyone to know how strongly you feel about them. A civil union just doesn't cut it. It's like, when you just, I don't know how to say it without like crying because she's my sister. I don't know, I just want her to have as much in life as I can. I just don't see how two people from the same mother and father can have such different worlds because of how our society is. So please vote yes so me and my sister can live both happy lives together. Thanks for coming, Maria. Thanks for coming. whatever you want. 
You can call it wicked marriage. You can call it Buddhist marriage. You can call it secular marriage. And you put that on your certificate for historical record, for historical purpose. It is not the business of the state what you call that relationship. Marriage belongs to the culture and not the state. If we would move in that direction, we could cut through this. And I've had conversations with people on very wide sides of this issue that feel that that's the way to go. As a pastor, I was in a situation where I signed the wedding certificate as an officer of the court. And you and I were brought up as American Baptists. In fact, we lived in the same house, but you know, a few years apart. Our pastor, fathers are pastors of the First Baptist Church in Derry, uh, one after the other. And it was, it's always been awkward to feel that I, as a minister, am an officer of the court to sign that wedding license. Under this scenario, everything would be taken care of at the town hall, and then they would come to me, or they would come to their uh, local Druid priest, or they would come, they would go to the dock and hold hands and jump in the water and say we're married, or whatever they want to call it, and then put it on a certificate. That's irrelevant to the state. It is irrelevant to the state, even though I would disagree with certain behaviors. It is irrelevant to the state what people, consenting adults do behind closed doors. I'm going to have to ask you to say thank you very much. It's a complicated concept, but it's something completely different, I think, would get us out of this whole issue. Thank you, and thank you very much for your patience. Now, to the opponents of marriage equality that have gathered here today, I say to you, you don't understand. We've already won. Our generation overwhelmingly supports marriage equality. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. The question is, will we be one of the last holdouts, hanging our heads in shame that it took so long to extend basic rights 